so so what about here you can see here that this uh, bulkiest group is or it uh, present at the fourth position to this carbonyl group uh, it is at adequate equatorial there's a possibility that these two are uh, trans to each other they, they assist to each other but the most uh, in a most uh, stable uh, conformation would be the one that uh, resulting the resulting uh, the resulting group should be you know trans to each other and they should be at equatorial to each other this is at equatorial position and this is at equatorial position and they are trans to each other because this is the most stable uh, uh, compound resulting after attack or hair so the attack on this carbonyl would be the uh, from the side where that can give you this uh, this product right so uh, this is selectivity the stereo selectivity we have already talked about the stereo topic ligands right in the last lecture or the previous lecture uh, you can uh, draw this, uh, you know, the trans isomers are the cis isomers. These are two uh, uh, rings, cyclohexane rings attached to either, each other, and then the other side. So you can make first time uh, as a trans, then you can make it as a cis. Uh, you can see that here the, the two hydrogen they are trans to each other, right? Uh, you can also make the cis conformation of this just by placing it over here. Right. If you, if I make this whole two uh, by rank over here, that will be the uh, cis conformation, but that will be sterically less feasible. Uh, so in this way, you can see that diastereo selective reaction. The main issue is what is the main issue in the diastereo uh, in the reaction where there is a diastereo selectivity. The main issue is the uh, you know the preferable orientation of the groups these groups near to the carbonyl group what should be the pro most preferable orientation of this groups for the sake of the convenience you know so there are two scientists who are three scientists altogether who have suggested certain rules for the attack of the nucleophile or hair or on this carbonyl group right and these three scientists one of them is uh, like the cram the other is uh, second is the falcon and then and falcon and collectively proposed one model and then cram proposed another model there are certain flaws in both of the models which uh, model is best it uh, we can't say that but uh, sometimes the cram's model is applicable sometimes the uh, falcon and model is applicable uh, we will see all those conditions where the cram model is uh, applicable and those conditions where the falcon n is working better just look at here uh, this is the feasible one of the site that i am talking about uh, but before doing this uh, before making the nucleophilic attack over here i would i would like to discuss with you about these groups for the sake of the convenience both the crams as well as the falcon n they have dis divided uh, the substituent the substituent which is present uh, which are present uh, at the stereo center around this carbonyl group around this carbon uh, adjacent to this carbonyl group there will be a stereo center uh, uh, there will be a stereo center in adjacent to this carbonyl group where there will be three groups right so these three groups we can divide based on their uh, bulkiness the one with the smaller size would be called as a smaller group. The one with the larger size would be called the larger group. And the one with the medium size group will be called as the medium size group. Right. So it depends upon the sizes. Small size, medium size, large size. These are the three groups that can be placed around this carbonyl group. Now our target is where? What is our target? We are going to attack this carbonyl. And we are looking for the preferential attack on this carbonyl group what should be the better orient because it's a single group this is a single bond there's a possibility that all these groups they rotate around this carbonyl group but what what would be the most preferable confirmation of these three groups around this carbonyl group so that a coming nucleophile can attack this carbonyl group this is the question and now all the things has been said uh, all the things have been said 
these uh, groups have been divided into uh, small, large, medium groups. This is a carbonyl group and now this attack is going to happen on this carbon. Uh, what we are going to do, what the CRAM rule say? So first of all, let's discuss about the CRAM's rule. CRAM is saying nothing. Uh, the, uh, CRAM is just saying that the carbonyl group, right? CRAM is saying that the carbonyl group should be anti to this larger group, right? What they have done, just look at here. Just a Newman pro a projection of this has been drawn, right? This is a carbonyl group. This is a methyl group, right? This is sp2 carbon. Adjacent to this, there is a single bond where three groups are attached. So first of all, the first step is to make the Newman projection for this. This is the Newman projection. This is the front carbonyl group. This is one of the substituents that is attached to the carbonyl group. And on the back side, you can see that uh, the carbon is attached with the larger group, smaller group, and the medium size group. Cram is saying that the carbonyl group should be the larger group should be anti to the anti periplanar to the carbonyl group. I mean, the larger group should be at 180 degree angle to the carbonyl group. That's it. Another thing that uh, Cram is saying is that uh, the attack on the nucleophile, the attack of the coming nucleophile will be on the this carbonyl group from the side between the smaller group and the larger group because this is the place where we can attack on this carbonyl group, right? So the attack should be, there are two possibilities. When you are placing uh, this uh, carbonyl group uh, opposite to this one, there's two possibilities. One of the possibilities is this, that the larger, smaller groups will be on the right, medium on the left, and the attack would be, uh, the two attacks are possible. One attack would be from the uh, attack on the carbonyl group from the side where this larger and the smaller groups are present, I mean this, this direction. The other possibility for the attack would be between uh, on the carbonyl group between the uh, uh, between the larger group and the medium size group. But since this uh, R group is coming in a way, that's why the attack is a bit uh, uneasy, less feasible at this side because this R of the carbonyl group is coming in a way between the medium group and the larger group. So this site is a bit uh, less feasible because larger group medium they are by themselves will make a little bit steric hindrance. But this site, smaller group and larger group, this is the most feasible site. We can't say that this product is not producing. We will have this product also. But this will be lesser in quantity compared to this one. So this will be the preferentially dominant product where the attack is going to happen from this way. Is it clear? Okay. So these are the uh, suggestions that attack will always be from the between the smaller and the larger group and the carbonyl group would be uh, the carbonyl group, the larger group would be perpendicular, uh, sorry, uh, anti periplanar at 180 degree angle to the carbonyl group. This was the something uh, that was shared by the Cramps model. Another thing that was uh, necessary in the Cramps model that uh, there will be, you know, on this side, the medium group, this should be, you know, uh, making a complexation with this one. Because if that uh, group is comple comple complexing with the carbonyl group, then preferentially there will be only one place available for the attack. It will be clear in the next, in next example, I think. So these are some of the, uh, see, this is the situation. If you are placing this larger group over here, the carbonyl over here, there are two possibility. One is between the larger group and the medium group, but this attack is less feasible because of this steric handles offered by these two groups. But this side is more reactive because of the less steric handles. And this is the predominant product. Right? What about here? So nucleophile, again, you can see that this is coming from this way. So what will be the major and minor product? 
you can say here if you draw the stereo uh, i mean the newman projection larger oh after the attack what would happen this this is something that is produced this is the carbonyl group but, but after the attack this will this carbonyl group will be changing into oh group and the nucleophile will be uh, attached to this sp2 carbon so this would be result oh group nucleophile group r group from the front larger group medium group smaller group on the back side and the other product larger oh nucleophile r so what is the main difference between these two two side attack either the carbonyl group can attack at one side i mean this side or it can attack this side so the product both of the product has been given one 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 of the one of the product that is the major product the other will be the minor product and they say that this one is a major product right because the smallest group is coming to the uh, final group again you can see here this is a uh, group this is the ch3 mgbr group this is attack on the carbonyl group so which way you think that this can attack on the carbonyl group so if you divide these groups this is the benzene ring this is the methyl group and what about this, this is the hydrogen this is a smaller group this is the medium size and this one is the larger group so attack should not be taking place from here preferentially the only feasible side would be this one right so if the this methyl which is a nucleophile is coming from this side so that will be the most and then h has to come this way on the other side so h will be here methyl group will be here and we will have this kind of the compound here again the bulkiest group is you know perpendicular to this oh group because this oh is resulting from the carbonyl attack major product i think it's not uh, very difficult to understand so this is dash stereo selectivity right uh, why the uh, cramps model fails cramps model fails in two respect sometime it happens that uh, it's possible that there is a chelation at one side right there is a possibility that if we have this chelating group this carbonyl this is a methoxy group see methoxy group if this methoxy group is present then what would be the conditions i can show you this condition then this would be the conditions this is the carbonyl group this is a carbonyl group and this methoxy group can make complexation with this so at this conditions one side will be completely blocked this side would be completely blocked so if one side is completely blocked then of course the there will be no density to selectivity in fact this will be changing into uh, density to specific reaction exclusively there will be only one product we can't uh, produce the other product right uh, see because of the chelation you understand this point what i'm trying to say let's suppose if this group because this methoxy group has we have to divide this into medium smaller larger group if one of the group this is the uh, electron complexation group where there's a possibility of electron donating then of course uh, some metals can come and can make a complexation between this one and this one and then this whole side will be blocked so under that conditions only one side will be available for the attack of this carbonyl group there is no possibility of the other group because one side has been completely blocked this is the one exception uh, the other exception is that uh, sometimes it's possible that most electronegative atom is attached among all these under that condition it will reduce the uh, it will increase the you know the um, chelation property of this because it will be inductive electron withdrawing so if that is the case then i mean if it it is uh, withdrawing the electron from here then of course it will increase the positivity of this and then again uh, the cram model will be uh, preferentially produce one product uh, this is the conditions you can see here and this is the complete story you can see this is a carbonyl group adjacent to this this methoxy group 
So if this lithium is it is attack, going to attack with this lithium aluminium hydride, lithium can come and can join these two. Let me explain in the other video. 